April 20th. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight on the DS, Heroes of Might and Magic. <laughs> Tonight on the DS, Might and Magic, Clash of Heroes. Let's do this. So you remember that show we did where we talked about how people literally do not see the text on the computer screen? Like, I, I recall like that. they literally do not see. I have found another example of literally do not see. All right. What do you see? Pedestrians literally do not see anyone on a bicycle. <laughs> Basically, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're getting ready to cross the street. And the red and white lights, that doesn't mean shit to them, right? Uh, you know, just like you and me, red and white light doesn't mean shit, right? So as soon as the last car is gone and they don't see any cars coming, they, it's time to go. They do not see bicycles. There could be 100 bicycles behind that last car and they'll just go... Eh. See, what I've discovered is that I, at least, myself, see the bicycles. But is that just possibly because of the zebra storyteller? Because I am, in fact, a bicyclist. So you know what the solution... The, there is a solution, though. And this, ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding. Yeah, you have to use your gay-ass bell, which is required on all... Well, well see, a noise-making device is required on all bicycles, and you have to use it. So I actually, mm -hmm. I had a trouble with that when I was a kid, because I did not have a bell on my bicycle or a horn well, or it is required like that. by law at least in the city and I was the once stopped by a police officer when I was young and he said you know you ran a red light and all these other things then mm -hmm. he's like and you don't have any sort of noise making device and I got into a long argument and finally he let me go on the grounds that I can clap loud enough to constitute a noise making <laughs> device of the proper uh, decibel level. <laughs> well, but you can't do it while your hands are on the handlebars. Yeah, but I can ride without my hands on the handlebars. If you can't do that, you shouldn't be biking. I'm just saying is that the point is, is that it, you know, that's like saying, oh, well, it's okay to have, you know, your car has this safety device, but it requires two hands. You have to take your hands off the wheel. Yeah. Oh, but I can drive with my knees. Okay. But if you can yell out enough to, and the thing is, but uh, I really don't feel like yelling. The proper way around this is one, really, you should just yell, get the fuck out the way as you're going. <laughs> but if that, if you don't feel like it, why don't we just make a bell that is actually a little MP3 player and a loudspeaker that plays your voice or maybe some uh, better, stronger voice yelling, get the fuck out the way. Well, it hap so, so happens that there is a crude and lewd rap song that I remember from the olden days because I think my brother used to... Uh, to quote it quite often. And the, Cruder and or looter than get the fuck the, out the way. The, the, the chorus of the song, I believe, is pretty much move, bitch, get out the way. And that's pretty much it. It's just like move, bitch, get out the way. So maybe that's the solution. Get out the way, bitch, get out the <laughs> way. <laughs> the thing is, my problem isn't so much that the bicyclists just... Uh, they keep running the fucking red light and hitting me. <laughs> it's not the fact that I just go and I don't see him. I see him and I go anyway because they got a red light. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting, like, which bicycle people will stop at red lights and which won't, and when they'll stop at a red light and when they won't, and, you know, I've sort of found a happy medium. Of course, you know, when I started out, I just stopped at everything for the full duration, but now it's like, okay, if I'm on the left side of the street right next to the sidewalk and I'm making a left turn and I'm going to stay next to the sidewalk... I can just go whenever it's okay to See, go. I follow, do I really, you know? It, I follow California rules. I don't know if, what mm -hmm. parts of California do this, but apparently there are places where the law is that for bicyclists, stop signs count as yield signs as opposed to stop signs. You know, and if, it's like, if it's starting, like a one way, if it, I'm crossing over a one way and I see that there's no car on the right and, they have a, and there's a stop sign there and there's no one stopped at the stop sign, you, it, then you can just go right across. You know? Although the rationale, think of this, is that it, the, the disruption caused to traffic by bicyclists stopping and starting again because of the time it takes to get up to speed, it's safer for them to just basically run stop signs as long as they would have had the right of way otherwise yeah. by treating it a yield. Regardless, they still stop far more often than everyone else. The other weird thing I'll see people do, right, is like there's these bicyclists who just like hate stopping and what they'll do is they'll get to a light or something and then they go doodly 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 and they'll doodly doodly, 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 doodly around right waiting to go it's so like, i i've discovered those people almost universally just don't actually know how to ride their bike and they have their seat way too high so when they stop the bike falls to the side and they can't easily kind of jump to get it up again mm. every person i've ever seen doing that has their bike configured incorrectly i see the thing is i some of the people i see doodling it's like they just don't want to lose you know momentums that's what I see a lot. But it takes more work to maintain that doodly, doodly, doodly. <laughs> I don't, don't ask me. I'm not the doodler. I, might I just, just stop and I, you I know. I may just continue I rollerblading. Take a break. Because rollerblades are the best of both worlds. I can just fucking jump on the sidewalk and in and out of people and just go. I don't I go on stop the sidewalk, anyone. but only if it's really empty. Yeah. It, and only if I really have to. Like, 
you know, there'll be three cars stacked right, and I can't get in between. What amazes me is it was it's so annoying on the sidewalk because there's slow people just kind of waddling <laughs> around. People people walking, I've realized, and the faster you're going, the more you notice it are incredibly erratic in their movements. They kind of just drift to the left, drift to the right, arm flying out with a cigarette on the end of it, all over the place. Yep. But I ended up walking the route that I normally rollerblade because I wanted to sit down somewhere else after I went to a store and put on my blades. And normally when I rollerblade on the sidewalk, I'm slowed down by all the slow people in my way and I get kind of irritated. So I walked and it was equally irritating. (laughs) I went just as fast ahead of been rollerblading. Mm. The people are just slow. The people are all slow anyway. Yeah, but uh, I've been playing a lot of DDR. Uh huh. And I'm very happy in the. So you realize. Yeah, I would be playing DDR because I got it all set up. I got the Step Mania. I got these songs. I got my pad. I got the home theater PC. Yep. But you know what? Wait, what? What? The reason I'm not playing DDR is because instead I am doing things that are the opposite of shit talking. Meanwhile, you, uh, shit talking still. About what? E commerce. Anything other than that? Everything. Such as? Any, all, all <laughs> shit. <laughs> I would like one piece of shit. Every poop, you have talked it. <laughs> ten no, poops, that's, you that's can't the, lift uh, them. That's the private Twitter. <laughs> can't lift ten poops. But the, you realize there is a new version of Step Mania that's like Alpha, Alpha, Alpha. Really? And it uses... I'm not sure which one I have. It's got, you would know. It looks completely different from the one you, you know and love. Okay. But I tried it because there was this crazy delay, like so profound that I could not dance. And basically what I discovered was that there is a 0.112 millisecond delay between me stepping on an arrow, that arrow being transferred to the PS1 controller, to the PS1 to USB converter, to the Mac That is the problem. The fucking Mac and the way it handles the USB device that I plug my PS1 controller into introduces this 0.1 millisecond delay. Yeah, this is why, you know, OS X is really just not, you can't, you know, even though like Steam is coming out for it, the gaming is just going to be terrible. It does absolutely no support for input devices or any of these things that are needed for games. I tried it. I used the keyboard and I used the gamepad that like other things that I plugged in. And there was no delay. It was only, and there's no delay on Windows if I use that device. It's just that device in OS X causes a 0. 0.112 millisecond yeah. delay. Exactly. See, 0. this 0. is the thing. Games, right? People don't realize PC games, computer games, you know, even console games, they basically just need like raw hardware access, like full on, right? But OS X, with all its niceties and user interface, what, and all these Steve Jobs things, when you, when, when you build an application on top of that, and that's fine if you're making like a web browser or some, you know, something like that. But if you're making a game, you need that shit to get out the way. <laughs> you gotta get out the way, right? You just need the hardware in your game, and you need everything else to move aside. And it's that's, interesting, you though, know. Cause... That's why, like, Microsoft Direct X is called, you know, that's why it was called Direct from the beginning, right? Is because it basically let you bypass like all this. You know, it was a new API to go direct between your program, DirectX, then the drivers. And you basically went around all this Windows bullshit, grabbed your full screen display device and threw your 3Ds up there. You know, that's what DirectX and Direct3D What's were interesting all about. though is that all that precision for gaming is actually pretty shitty if you use it in the rest of the computer. Like OS 10 is a wonderful experience until you want to play a game on. No, it's a, it's a pretty I think it's a terrible experience all around. Though my uh I've got that Steel Series laser mouse which I still I recommend that to anyone who cares about their input. This mouse is Maybe I should get like, it. Like I cannot express to you. I can't even begin to overstate how wonderful this mouse is. I should, we, the thing is, <laughs> so I plugged it we into need, the Mac. We need, to, we, so we need to gut like a regular old Logitech mouse, put it in the same exact case as that one, and then do the double blind test to see, you know? Yeah. The thing is, I've done customizations with this mouse, you know, in the individual, like the response rate that you can't do in software with a Logitech. Yeah, but has it helped you or not? We don't know. I think so. It could be psychosomatic. Plus, it just feels nice. Yeah. It doesn't work so well in OS X, though. But uh, all that aside, speaking of raw input and playing games, there's been a lot of buzz about the so You know, people always talk about when the next-gen shooter comes out, even though the next-gen shooter has always been, like, five gens back if you count old PC shooters. Yep. But uh, body count, apparently, everyone's talking about it like it's the new first-person shooter. I'd never heard gonna, of it. I'd never heard of what it either. What is it? But there's a bunch of buzz about it. And I, what I want to skip to is... They make a huge... Tell me if you've heard this before. 
The Daik- with- it's a Daikatana, let me guess. It's not a Daikatana. <laughs> it's not, we have revolutionary AI. <laughs> okay. It's another claim that has been made in the past. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Quote, it is not just about effects. It's about access. In body count. You can blow chunks out of interior walls. Soldier of Fortune, yep. Red Faction. It is the blow shit up game. They make uh, a, They keep talking about how you want to hide behind a crate and check out the business, shoot a hole in the crate, and then peek through the hole. And that's all anyone has to say about this game, other than you can crouch, and then, and here's where everyone, uh, they lost me. And then you can use the left stick to peek. Do a little peek and peek around the corner. Like, this is some new revolutionary thing that no one's thought to do yeah, this okay, before. Yeah, okay, so Soldier of Fortune had peeking, right? Uh, Mech Warrior 2 for MS-DOS, <laughs> <laughs> TIE Fighter, and any various other Descent, any number of 3D games or, you know, games that were at least in 3D Quote, environments. Quote, it's natural, it's allowed comfortable, you to control and your... it's adaptive, and it will surely consign the whole locking on mechanic to the graveyard of cover system history. The first Wait, it's a post, console game? The first... I said left stick. Oh, right. The first post on Slashdot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read it in its entirety. Will this also be available on a system with an input controller suitable for shooters? Like, say, a mouse? <laughs> 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 it amazes me that for all I pay attention to gaming, I'd never heard of this game. And a lot of people are talking about how they think it's going to be this next-gen game, but... It looks like it's just rehashing a bunch of tr- tricks from games five and ten years ago, and then putting so it basically on a we had Halo, which was like GoldenEye, Unreal Tournament level of game, and now yep. they're stepping up to like the Soldier of Fortune level of game on the console. So how many years will it be before you've got like and NA- oh never, <laughs> <laughs> never will there be NS level or Tribes Two level of game on the console? It will never happen. It, and Considering story. I had difficulty mapping enough buttons in uh, Weapons Factory on my keyboard, which has plenty of buttons. <laughs> <sighs> so what do you got for me, Captain News? So uh, I said before on the show a long time ago, I think around the time that, you know, Bionic Commando and Mega Man 9, B- Bionic Commando rearmed and Mega yeah, not Man that, 9. Not that 3D, 3D Bionic yeah, Commando that no. died. Bionic Commando rearmed and Mega Man 9 came out. That Capcom was the company that knew the business, right? And in terms of all game developers... You know, at the time, the only ones who were really know what was up was Capcom. And well, Capcom had their event in Hawaii, and they had a nice Hawaiian theme. They had Captivate 2010. Capcom, Captivate, pretty good, huh? Yeah. And it was cool to have it in Hawaii, which is sort of like the Japan-U.S. halfway point, you know? Uh, But anyway, they came out with a whole bunch of announcements. First of all, I didn't realize it was next week, but Super Street Fighter 4 is coming next week. But on June 15th, it's going to have a DLC tournament mode. And basically, the online multiplayer features of Super Street Fighter 4 are going to be insane. You can have group battles where it's like us four versus you four. You know, so it's like, oh, you better fight this guy. Oh, you bet, you know, that kind of stuff going on, right? Team Teamwork. They got tournaments where, like, the tournament guy can, like, manage the bracket. And, like, you can start up a tournament, but not everyone actually has to be connected at the beginning. Oh, you- Goro design tournaments. <laughs> you could, yeah, you know, you could. So it's like I can set up a tournament for eight people. And if only two people are there, they play their bracket. And then we wait for everyone else to show up. And then they, you know, we could do it like that. You could do basically. All sorts of wicked awesome stuff. This is not good. It's going to be like This is not in-game. good at all because I gave up fighting games. <laughs> I've not played fighting games in a long time. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to go down that road again. Oh, you gave up fighting games. Well, you might be interested to note the uh, the trailer for Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Uh... Including... Now, the, there's two really interesting things. Number one, right? I know it's probably not going to happen, but they really just need to come out with thousands of characters in one game. Why... Nah, I mean, you know, Marvel's Capcom 2 had an insane number of characters, but why can't they just have it where they have every character? At least every character that anyone cares about. Or in the very least... Is it really going to take them that long to make every character? If they had a nice enough sprinkling of the the weird-ass characters... Like, at least least 50, you know, or 100. Then I would be like, okay, that is enough characters. I'd be okay with reskins, like in Smash. Eh, you don't want reskins, but what you can do is you can do sort of like, you can like patch together things, right? For example, like, you know, Iron Man shoots a blast of fire from his fist or whatever, right? And then Silver Surfer can have the same, you know, blast, but then Silver Surfer also has like a flying move, and you can give him the same flying, like, attack with his surfboard that Spider-Man has when he swings on a rope, you know? So you can mix it up like that, where there's just a, there's a set of moves, and each character sort of has different combinations of the pre-existing moves, as opposed to, say... 
Mortal Kombat, where it's the exact same character in a different color. <laughs> um, but anyway, Busty. right. So the other interesting things about this: number one, right, Resident Evil dude is in the game. They're, they're, so they're really they're getting creative. With, the, like, the greatest thing characters. is, I'm looking at the picture here, and it shows like all the characters standing there, ready for their melee. He's just holding his gun, like, "Hey guys, yeah, they." I think I'm here for the martial arts tournament. I'm, I'm hoping they get really creative with which characters they bring in, especially on you know, I guess on both sides, right? It's like. On the Marvel side, they should start bringing in like some cosmic outer space dudes, which didn't make a really big presence in the, you know, they had Thanos, I guess, you know. Um, maybe bring in like uh, Ego, the living planet, something like that, right? That'd be freaking awesome. This is where you lose me, right? Galactus, that'd be cool. Um, but maybe if uh, in Capcom's side, why not bring in like Phoenix Wright? Why not bring in, I don't know. Freaking, I can't even think of anything. But, you know, there's plenty of, uh, no, freaking, uh, bring it, bring it Woodman, Woodman, you know, some of the mans, because they had Mega Man, but they didn't have Proto Man, right? Or well, No one can be Proto Man. Have just Dr. Wily straight up. He comes out flying in a giant machine, and you do damage to him, and the machine blows up, and then he's just standing there. Maybe all of his attacks are just bringing other robot masters to do their man. Oh, that'd be freaking awesome. That'd be great. It'd be like, Woodman move. Oh, what's the move for Quick Man? I forget. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, anyway, but the other the inter other interesting thing is that the Ren they got this MT framework, which is like Capcom's internal engine they're using for this game. Apparently, the, like, the in-game models... They look like just like art straight from a Marvel comic book. Like it, like you're playing the game and just your guy on screen it looks like some dude drew it, and it's like you know any still image looks like it was drawn on a Marvel comic book page. Every single one, it's like unbelievable that they and these aren't even like final images. They're still doing work on this, but they have they put up these screenshots or of like you know rendered models, and it looks like just you know like some dude drew it, and I'm like they just. Copy that out of a comic book. No. It is weird how they look a lot more like a straight up still than something that would actually be fluid. And yeah, animated. it looks like someone drew it, inked it, and printed it, and that you know. But it's a three D model somewhere, so that's kind of crazy. Didn't they also announce that they're releasing the sequel to uh, Okami finally? Uh, they, no, it's not a sequel. Apparently, it's a I don't know what they called it, they, but it it, was, they, they said uh, it wasn't Kotaku, a sequel. It's the DS sequel to Okami. Uh, Okami Den. No, I read that it was the DS uh, spiritual successor, not sequel. Spiritual successor. Yeah. Uh. So you'll be able to take your DS or whatever and paint every single tree in the whole world with your stylus, which would be, you know, we'll see, maybe it's going to be a lot better than doing it with, you know, the Wiimote. There's a chance they didn't follow the same mechanic of do a million boring things for 40 hours yeah. that Okami I'm going to take a wait and see approach on that. But the one I'm most excited about is still Bionic Commando Rearm, because what did we say way back? We said the remake is the awesome game and that 3D one is going to fail. And what happened? It was right. The 3D one was a disaster. I don't think anyone even remembers it. People and yet remember Bionic it. Commando Rearmed was crazy popular. The thing is, I'm, I'm worried because Bionic Commando Rearm 2, it looks like they have it right, but I didn't hear any music, so I don't know if the music is as good. Because the music, honestly, I'll say straight up, was a, half the a game. solid half of what made that game awesome. And number two, you can jump. So it's like, well, what the fuck? This isn't even Bionic Commando anymore. What the hell is this? Jumping. My only hope is that jumping is not always available. No, it looks like jumping is always available. Well, maybe there could be an item that allows the jumping. But it looked like it's just a tiny hop. So it's like they'll have something just out eh, of the reach of eh, your hook, eh, and you jump a little bit, and now you can hook it. It'll only be worth it if he actually goes, It doesn't, eh, it doesn't eh. look to me like he can jump... You know, over he's not going to be Marioing anything. That's nah, for sure. It looks like it's a very tiny jump, but it's a jump nonetheless. I am not dubious, only because I hope that they. You know, the thing is, there might be situations where you have to like use the jump to go over a bullet or something. It's like uh, dodging bullets with jumping is annoying. Eh, the thing is, I trust them because Rearmed was one of the most satisfying gaming experiences I had since Portal. Yeah, at least it graphically looks pretty much right in line. Yeah, and Mega Man Ten is already out, so uh, I didn't even beat nine. Capcom is still what I said, you know, how maybe a year ago, if not right. Capcom is still the number one game company right now. If game companies want to make money, do what Capcom's doing. They got it right. You got it wrong. So things of the day. Oh shit. This is just too funny. And I have to push off another thing of the day just to get this out here. You might have seen it. But uh, Kotaku has a short little story about a concerned parent who discovered that his son had been banned from Xbox Live until the year 9999. 
Mm-hmm. So he why posted, did why do they ban you until 1999? Why don't they just say permanent ban? Why why do they have to set a date on it? I don't know. I kind of like the idea though of that ban because theoretically, you know, in the year 9999. That kid can uh, show his dick again. Theoretically, I guess. So the father, you know, didn't he get could any response. He could also just get another account. It's not like... That's the only thing I understand about uh, this. Scott, it's Xbox Live. You're paying for gold. You have to give up all your shit to make a new account. Yeah, so big deal. That Most people care about that. All right. If someone cared enough to get If all you want to do banned, is play games online, you can just play, get another account. It's yes, like, but know. if someone cared enough to get their reputation, get their points, and get all these things, they're not going to give them up just to get a new account. Mm. But uh, regardless, I mean, I think you just put too much on stock in the fact that other people care about these things. Okay. The father posted in the public Xbox forum, you know, hey. That's uh, a pretty cool dad if he's smart enough to go do that. I would like to know why my son's account was banned until 31129999 without any notification. And the response from the Xbox Microsoft Enforcer guy was, and I quote, Your son was exposing himself on camera in Uno. Yep, that's pretty typical of Uno. I mean, Uno is basically the chat roulette of Xbox, right? Well, I mean, it's not like Uno is a game. <laughs> no, that's for sure. That's it? That's it. Okay. So I've always said, and I'm pretty sure it's true, right, that the re- that you know we look at all this bad typing on the internet. You Like people saying, I love you, and they spell love, L-U-V, and they use the letter U and the letter R. Oh, it's just people who don't know how to type. Yeah, I think, you know, a a lot of, I think, older people attribute it to kids with, like, having no grammar or no writing skills, but I really think it's just no typing skills, and that, that, you know, they so they can't type, so they're hunting and pecking and trying to use as few letters as possible, and also texting, you know, on a cell phone with digits one through nine, because most kids don't have smartphones that have full keyboards or whatever. So, you know, doing that, you know, that typing leads them to, you know, write in this way. And then that writing in that way carries back to writing by hand and so forth. So uh, I think that this person here on this website I'm linking to, which is called hyperboleandahalf.blogspot.com, made a bunch of funny comics. Uh, (laughs) How every time they see some bad writing on the Internet, they imagine that it's a person with just two fingers and one of them is mangled. And how they imagine, you know, whenever someone uh, writes a lot as one word and not two words, that they imagine this monster called the a lot. And they draw the a lot. And there's a picture of an a lot. And then, you know, there's a picture of uh, someone caring about this a lot. And a picture of a lot of fire and a lot of mist. I I think you got to actually see these things. And a lot of straw and a lot of beer cans. And it's uh, it is a pretty funny comic. That you should... Uh, <laughs> I feel like we could use this in the forum because, you know, for a long time we had the moderators. We currently have basically no moderators but us and one or two people again. But we would correct the grammar and spelling of the kids in the forum. Maybe a better way is to have an lot style comic for every common mistake and just stick it into the posts of anyone who fails. Mm. The thing is, it would be ideal to have the, the, the comic appear as some sort of metadata and not actually in the post itself. True, but that would require you to write some sort of uh, plug-in maybe, for Vanilla. Maybe when Vanilla 2 comes out, right? Yeah, uh, no, uh, we're not investing any I, time in writing something for the current Vanilla. When Vanilla 2 comes out and we switch to it and whatever, whatever, I can make like a plug-in where a moderator can click and there'll be, like a, they could, there'll be a list of grammatical mistakes and they can click the checkboxes, right? And basically you'll get the badges will appear on the post, right? That'd be perfect. And basically there'll be uh, negative. See, the thing is, will negative badges work? You know, it's all this whole psychology thing, right? Maybe someone will collect the bad badges exactly. because they're that's cool. Exactly, the, that's the problem, right? Is like if you want to use the badges negatively. Well, I want one one way around it is to have punishments for. We're in the meta moment, by the way, because we're talking meta <laughs> shit about the show. That's right. I'm feeling. I want a cat-like typing filter when you are actually typing a post. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna beta test putting the stupidity filter on there. You know that one? Yeah, that one worked pretty well. Yeah, surprisingly well. So, also, meta stuff, the uh, book club book right now is still Carl Sagan's Cosmos. Yeah, what are we doing uh, that episode? Well, have you read it yet? Maybe I'll add it to this Amazon order, because you don't want to lend me your copy. Because I'm reading mine, and I'm enjoying You're it. reading pretty slowly. Awesome this book is, because I haven't been reading it that much. Well, I'm going to air. I'm getting it on Amazon. Let me find a cheap copy. I've been reading more and more Java lately, because I'm learning to write better Java, because I'm basically transitioning and being a freaking developer. 
<laughs> Lucky you. I'm not happy, but I convinced everyone we're switching to Git. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. How about that? Are oh, they going to learn how to use it? Do you know how to use it? I'm working on it. I'm, I'm setting up the server and setting up all the procedures and stuff. Well, and how are you setting up the server? Well, Ketosis? It's, it's uh, Tuesday, not Monday. Okay. We'll, talk, we'll talk about this on a Monday, I think. All right. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, PAX is a long way away, but we'll be there doing panels. And if you want to go to PAX uh, West, PAX Prime, you should buy your badges now. They're going to sell out. Get hotels, too. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kineticon, if you want to do an awesome gaming panel, we are still accepting submissions. Very soon, we're going to start scheduling things. doesn't have to things. be a gaming panel. It could be any panel. But it is Tuesday, so I would assume if you're listening now, you want to do a gaming panel. Mm. We've got a lot of good gaming panels already. You would not feel uh, left out or alone if you were doing a gaming panel. Plenty of gaming panel friends. I don't think we have much else. That's about it. Uh, every <laughs> All the used Cosmos copies on freaking Amazon are all hardcover. <laughs> what the hell all right <laughs> actually the the soft cover i have right now because I, I don't know where my original copy went i bought at wildwood for like a dollar uh, one new from six bucks fuck, fuck. Uh, anyway whatever okay so so might and magic we're not going to talk about the might and magic franchise or all the associated cruft it's a good series man it's all i'm always i do want to say though that might and magic is one of those gaming franchises that's old there's a lot of games in it right it appeals to a surprising demographic yeah. compared to what you would expect. You know, it's out there. People has name recognition. The thing is, it's like, okay, it's obviously not crazy popular. It's not like Mario, you know? It's not like, uh, I don't know, uh, friggin' any... Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, any... It, it's not, you know, Street Fighter, right? It's like there are these... It's weird how there's these sort of mid to low-end gaming franchises manage to stick around. It's like... It's a franchise. A lot of games say Might and Magic on them. They're not, it's not crazy popular, but it's around, and somehow it sticks around despite not being Well, one, huge. they were pretty crazy popular during the PC for, gaming yeah, days. Yeah, for a very short time. But think about the number of people who played them in those olden days. Not a large number at all. But I think what it is more is that I believe the demographic of a lot of the Might and Magic games skews a lot more toward, toward girls surprisingly mm. and, and, and to, at least in my experience but also toward people who are all either almost off the radar on gaming like they're not online and vocal about their gaming but they play might and magic and they like these games and the other types of people who play it a lot are the people who even if they're on the radar are not the people who go to gaming websites and participate in like the online gaming culture. Do so you of think there's a whole bunch of Might and Magic players out there who just aren't talking because they just sort of sit home playing I think Might so. and Magic? Or in the very least, they talk to each other mm. and they go to those like Might and Magic fan sites, which they're a surprising. Number I'm sure of. there's probably plenty of those. But we were talking about one recent Might and Magic game, Clash of Heroes, on the DS. Yeah, which... it's not Heroes of Might and Magic. It's Might and Magic Clash of Heroes. And it's not different. Heroes of Might and Magic because that would be silly. Yes, Heroes of Might and Magic, Clash, Clash of Heroes. Heroes. That, yeah. You know, I kind of wish it was named that no. now. It's yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's basically, there is technically an RPG in here. but No, it is, not really. It is tacked on. It in, has an RPG like Advance Wars has an RPG. We're talking, no, no, no. Advance <laughs> Wars was an engaging, thorough story compared to Might and Magic, Clash of Heroes. You think this so? Is I mean, but I'm talking about like the part where you walk around the map at least... In Advance Wars, it's just a map, and you click on the next dot, and then you fight. In Clash of Heroes, at least, you do a little bit of stuff on the map. But there's a guy with a purple bandana who says, I sure like my purple bandana. And right next to him is a guy who says, I will pay you a whole bunch of money if you find a guy with a purple bandana and kill his ass. Yeah. And then you go back to the guy with the purple bandana. That's a lot more than Advance Wars, which says, click on the next city to fight. But Advance Wars, you had the romance between the characters, at least in the old games. There's romance in this. Yeah, yeah. Between Night Guy and Woodsy Girl. No, fuck that. You know where the best romance is so far? You haven't gotten to this part, but in the demon level, you meet the succubus who, one, is totally hot. Oh, shit, hot succubus. Like, actually, totally hot. Mm. Both literally and figuratively. Mm. (laughs) And uh, she basically joins your party, and she's kind of a bitch, but uh, whatever. Whatever. There's definitely sexual tension there. (laughs) But it is so tacked on. It is so flimsy. But it's just an excuse to play a puzzle game with a theme. Yeah, I was kind of really surprised. Every Might and Magic game I've ever played, right, including King's Bounty, right, which is also, people don't realize this, you know, is a is a Might and Magic game, right, sort of secretly, is um, 
the way they work generally is you walk around a map and you're sort of doing this town castle management kind of thing, but you're also sort of managing this army. And then you're also, when you get into a fight, there's a little, there's like a tiny hex map and you move your units around and fight. And that's what a might and magic game is all about. Uh, but this game has basically nothing to do with those at all, whatsoever. I can't even find any connection at all, period. Except for the fact that as you walk around, you can purchase units at certain stops, and that's it. And uh, in, in no other way does it even resemble Might and Magic, any, any other Might and Magic game I've ever seen in my life. Now, the life. thing is, despite the theme basically having nothing to do with the game whatsoever, yeah. I mean, it, it makes so little sense and it even breaks down internally when you try to figure out like what's actually going on with the plot and how come you fight everyone you talk to with an army you don't fight everyone you talk almost to. everyone mm, okay <laughs> <laughs> just the logistics of this do not make any sense but had it just been the puzzle game it wouldn't have been as fun it, the theme for somehow would add something to the game surprisingly and it basically just tricks you into playing a series of puzzles that are kind of match up the colors with a little mechanic of making a little wall, different factions that do different things. I don't know. I think the puzzle game on its own would have been just as fun. The thing is, you, you, the, the part of the, you need to keep the theme on the puzzles, right? Because the puzzles, it's like you look at, say, Magical Drop, which is a very similar puzzle game to this, right? And, you know, it's got the same sort of action, pull off the bottom and push back up, right? Yep. Match up three colors in a row to, act, to, to you know, score. But the this the combat in this has a theme. Like you choose different units. They got swordsmen and spearmen. You got big knights and angels and demons and all sorts of skeletons and all that sort of stuff. And they actually attack and do damage. And you build walls and you have different items and different powers. So it's like they it's sort of like Puzzle Quest, right? Puzzle Quest was sort of like the first in this, okay, we have a puzzle game, but we've also got sort of an RPG combat thing attached to what's basically Tetris or Bejeweled or whatnot, right? So this sort of takes it a step further. It makes a better puzzle game, and instead, you know, Puzzle Quest, the RPG part was sort of external, right? You'd play Bejeweled to get mana to play Magic the Gathering in Puzzle Quest. But in this, you are, the puzzle is the RPG combat-y part at the same time, it's merged. It's not. It's not like they tacked on this combat to a puzzle to magical drop. It's magical drop of fantasy. It is the magical drop is the fantasy combat together. Now, I think for people like us, it wouldn't matter that much. I mean, look, it's a game that we still love to this day is Battle Balls, where the theme is just pictures in the background and <laughs> Battle you're fighting Ball with balls. Or Codcraft to Sakura Tetris, one of the yeah. best Tetrises, except for I guess DS Tetris is better. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But we like that stuff. People like us will play a, a, the, a versus puzzle game in any context if the versus puzzle game is good, mm. especially if it's direct versus, like doing damage to someone. Yep. But the theme of this game kind of adds a much more universal appeal, but I think it really just serves the same purpose as the character you pick in the background of Battle Balls that has no effect on the game whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It just adds this kind of element. And also because the different uh, factions are different, you know, the skeletons or the elves or whatever. And they're really different, too. It adds a huge kind of paper, rock, scissors, or in the very least... It's not a know, paper, rock, scissors. I think it's just you have to play differently. You eh, know? Not necessarily. I'm pretty sure that certain factions can just kick the shit out of certain other factions. You think so? Because I, I, I get the feeling that every faction is sort of equal... You know, I mean, your units might not be leveled up, or you might choose the wrong units. You well, know? in the verses, everything's leveled up all the way. That's the yep. brilliant part. That's, uh, that's definitely what brilliant. What makes this game is that the RPG, whatever, it's kind of fun leveling your guys up and whatever, because you don't really have to grind. But when you play verses, it just gives you everyone all maxed out. You're, everyone's maxed up, level up all the way, and then you both pick an artifact. Yep. And everyone has access to every artifact. The only unlocking in the game at all is you have to beat the that part of the game of a given character. Before yeah, if you, you didn't beat it. the necromancy level, then you can't use necromancy stuff like skeletons and, and wraiths and whatever in the, uh, you know, the, the verses, which is fine. You know, that's, I, I've seen a lot worse unlocking than that. Yep. The only thing that really bothers me is that I kind of wish there were more things to do in the versus mode. Mm -hmm. Like it's one situation where they made the versus mode great. It's just a direct straight up competition. They didn't do anything stupid like Pokemon games tended to. It was exactly what I wanted. But as a result, I just want more. I want like 2v2, maybe some team fights. I want different battle modes. 
I think it would be cool if there was like some sort of mo. You know, if you could like just give me allow me to modify the rules a little bit. You know, like tweak the number of guys that get sent in, or yeah, because maybe I want to play a versus with two really low level guys. Yeah, you but know? I can't do that. Yeah, stuff like that. I don't know. Or like you know, versus no big guys. You know, just like be like no big guy mode. That'd be cool. Now I still haven't actually played this game much with humans. I played it once versus against Alex while we were waiting for our food in a fancy restaurant. And you know what? For the one time we played it, it was crazy epic. Like, I, I come out like, oh, I've played this a lot more than Alex has because I played it for, you know, weeks. And he only played it, like, you know, since he bought it, which is after I told him about oh, it. Oh, because you didn't buy it. Right. I, <laughs> maybe I should. Anyway, yeah. I'm going to buy it for the Xbox instead of the... Anyway. So... Uh, I come out with this huge, devastating combo and bring his health halfway down. He's like, oh, shit. And then we keep playing, and he starts whittling me and whittling and whittling, and I can't really mount a strong defense, and he's got a big guy charging up, and I don't have an... an, an I use my big guy right away. I don't have another one coming in, and it's not looking too good. And we're basically at the point where he's got stuff charged up. As soon as it lets loose, I'm dead, right? And I've basically just... I, I, I was like, oh, I, I lost. It's over. But I charged up the only guy I had on the screen, and you know, I just went, oh, whatever. I can't win. Nah. Then my one guy, freaking, he activated on the turn right before, and I didn't think he was going to do enough damage to win, so I wrote him off. He busted through a, a tiny broken wall and a couple units, and he had exactly enough life left to do the eight damage necessary for me to win exactly enough <laughs> you know, damage and he was down to zero, and I won, and I would have lost in the next turn. So that is a friggin' balanced, awesome multiplayer right there. I want to play a lot more of this game online with people. I just want to fight actual humans. I don't know. Does the DS play online? I don't know. I didn't even look at that. Oh, I know the Xbox will play online. In the very least, I'll play with people at the next PAX. Oh, for sure. These people better have this game to play, because the single card mode play it. seems to only let you play knights. Mm. And knights, I don't like. I, I personally, you don't like I, the knights? I like being the elves or the undead. See, I kind of like the big guys on the knights, like the angel and the giant armored dude. Yeah, but that skeleton knight in the uh He's pretty dangerous. The thing is, I like... With the spider cloak, he'll do like 190 damage. Yeah. The thing is, uh, in terms of walls, right, I like either the skeletons or the elves because the skeletons, they have the walls that sort of build up when the skeletons get crushed. But the elves actually, I think, have the slightly better walls because they just rebuild themselves. So you can build like a tiny wall and you don't have to keep stacking it. It'll just sort of grow on its own. But at the same time, the stacking is usually because the, you can do some pretty amazing combos in this game despite the limitations. Though I do wish there was a way to play with a slightly deeper and wider field. Yeah, I think the thing is, is like when they designed the game, they built it like exactly right. Oh, they right. definitely did. Because it's like, okay, if you build any walls at all, we're not going to give, you'll have only five spaces, which means you can't build, you know, the six tall, you know, double fusion behind it, right? You, so you can only do that on an empty row. And they, you know, we only going to give you this many wide so that you can't just, you know, get, it's not a multiple of three. So that way you can't just build a wall straight across perfectly. You know, you're going to have some funkiness going on there. And that forces you to, you know, manipulate your units cleverly and such and such. So they balance it to the perfect height and width for the rule set they had. But if they allowed you to go bigger and wider, it could get pretty interesting but I think it also might not scale well because it would just be like, it would just be more. It's like, oh, well, great. Now I basically had, it's like playing, you might as well just play three games at once that are separate. Yeah, well, I mean, they'd have would to change the rules off. a little bit, but it'd yeah. be interesting to play a similar game on a slightly larger scale. I mean, like, would Tetris be any better if you made it taller and wider? Unless you also made it different. That's exactly what I'm saying. A yeah. slightly different game just with a slightly larger, more zoomed out scale to it, but otherwise similar in the way that you go about it. Hmm. It's definitely, it, it shows the triumph of a game that has a very small number of rules, but yet has emergent strategy just by the interaction of those rules. I mean, get three guys in a row vertically, and they start charging their laser. Get another three guys vertically that will finish charging at the same time and are the same color as someone else already charging, and they link up, and they both do more damage together. Mm -hmm. If you make a guy of the same color and type behind a guy who's already charging his laser, double laser. Yep. You can even get like triple laser, quadruple laser. And every big guy and most of the little guys have some weird special power, but they're still very, they're deterministic. They're things like this guy does X more damage under Y situation, or this guy doesn't take damage when defending. Yep. There's also, you know, get three guys wide and they make a wall. But what if you get, you know, 
you got three guys wide and you delete a unit and now you got three guys wide and three guys tall at the same time you basically get a wall and a charged laser you like get extra stuff for doing that yep you also get like extra turns because they only give you three actions per turn but if you delete guys and your deletion makes things happen then you get extra moves so like you delete a guy that makes a wall it charges two lasers but with that one deletion well guess what now you've got like three extra actions but those extra actions you could bring in extra units and build two more lasers and you know you can get you really get the machine rolling that way pretty good it's just it's a solid game and i'd recommend you know anyone who's in this ds drought right now this game is pretty much up anyone's alley you know i think the ds i don't know if it's in like the biggest drought it is a slight drought compared to where the ds was before but you know the ds really is it's like the sleeping giant you know it's always there people don't talk about it too much but it's freaking everyone's got one it's got piles of awesome games like baby's fashion like baby's fashion, you know, <laughs> and I think because people don't pay attention to it, pretty much if someone does make a really great DS game that isn't like, you know, Nintendo, pretty much anyone but Nintendo makes an awesome DS game, no one will know about it. It'll be completely mystery, with like this game was. But then as soon as people discover it, it's like, holy shit, there's an awesome DS game we didn't know about, discovered, uh, you know, a hidden grail. And that's exactly what Clash of Heroes is. I have to take a moment, though. The the the, yeah, the tack down RPG is dangerously cheesy. Like, there is some well, it's, bad it's just so, fucking dialogue in there. It's just a generic RPG. You know how many DS games have, like, just generic fantasy RPG attached to them? But the, the reason it feels so tacked on primarily is that you move around by moving between these dotted nodes. And they'll be like, a guy... It looks a lot like... That fi- that bastardized Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Uh huh. It looks a lot like that. This, you know, I've played a lot of DS games that are sort of, I've, you know, generic fantasy RPG, and this is pretty much the same as all the others. At least this one has a little bit better arts and such. Yeah, the art's good. Now, think about the music. The music sounds really good, but it sounds almost exactly like the music in Wesnoth. Yeah, it's like when I started playing the game, you know, uh, you know, I was like, huh. Where is the, uh, you know, this music? I've heard it before somewhere. And I was like, you know, at first I'm like, this seems to sound exactly like a lot of other music from, you know, DS fantasy games. You know, it just sort of felt like that, even though I couldn't figure out exactly which game. But then as soon as someone said Wesnoth, I'm like, ah, yeah, this, you know, I don't know if it's DS games in general or Wesnoth and this game or what, but there's a style of music that just seems to be the music used in these fantasy games. And I don't know what's up with it, but it's sort of weird because it's not great. Like, I wouldn't put it on my iPod, but it's catchy, and you sort of remember it in this weird way. And it's also sort of fitting. I don't know. But, yeah, it's uh, it's fantasy musics. This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.